I'm in the process of rebuilding a McDonald and Miller number 67 low water cutoff for a steam boiler. Um, I got about halfway through it and I realized that um, maybe I could share my experience with others and help other people. Um, the, uh, the, the, the float was not uh, functioning, so it wasn't turning off the, the low water cutoff switch. So the first thing I did was I removed this flange right here at the bottom of the boiler or the valve so I could look up in there and um, in order to remove that it had slotted head screws on there which would not um, I could you know they were um, I could not get a screwdriver to turn the screw they were they were just bending over they were shot so I had to cut those screws off and what I did was I used a uh, um, multi-tool with a carbide tip blade and I went in there and cut the heads of the screws off um, then I was able to get this off and I had the studs still left in there and three of the four studs I was able to get out um, just using uh, uh, high quality uh, penetrating oil um, one of them um, when I was trying to turn it out it snapped off um, and so then I had to drill it out um, and and I was successfully able to uh, get it out of there um, so once I had that flange off, I looked up inside it. Oh, by the way, I'll show you the label on this thing. So it's McDonald uh, number 67, made by McDonald and Miller, ITT. Um, so I looked up inside there, and what I saw, and we won't be able to see, they've got it all taken apart. It was all loaded up with barnacles of, uh, you know, rust and scale that were preventing the um, float from moving. So here's the float. It goes in to the end um, and from the end and, and, and it floats up and down. So I'll try to show you how that works. There's a little um, cam on the back of it that operates the switch. The switch is right here. Um, so you can see the inside mechanism that. So once I got the scale removed, you know, when this was inside the housing, um, I could... I, 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 I removed this whole thing from the boiler so I could work on it. And I looked up in there. And again, I can't really see without a good light. But um, I removed enough of the scale from around the, um, the float that it did move a little bit. But even though I couldn't see any scale that was preventing it from moving, it wasn't moving far enough to operate the, the cam on the switch. So I went down, or first I looked online for a new part, and I found that it was going to cost me something like five or $600 to replace this uh, low water cutoff. And uh, so I went down to my lo local plumbing supply house that I've been doing business with for, uh, well, I bought the boiler from them, I think, 38 years ago. Um, so this, uh, this, this switch is 38 years old. Um, and I brought the, the uh, switch down there, and lo and behold, there was a guy standing at the uh, counter that um, was quite the expert. And by the way, I'm no expert in this kind of stuff, but I've been doing, you know, repairs on, on all kinds of things around my house for a long time. And, I, you know, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. But uh, anyway, I brought this down there, and the guy standing at the counter um, was an expert in these things. And... and uh, I was really fortunate to have encountered him because um, uh, the guys at the counter are pretty knowledgeable, but this guy was even more knowledgeable. He looked at it and he said, yeah, you got too much scale in there for that to move. You got to clean it out some more. Um, you're probably going to have to take the float out of there and clean it out, which I did. So I, I removed the switch from the back of the float. I'll show this when it's reassembled after I put it all back together. Um, but I removed the switch, uh, removed and removed the float after having removed enough of the scale f from the inside to allow me to remove the float. And when I got the float out, what I found was that the, the this the, what essentially is the, the hinge, this this uh, accordion shaped thing at the end, was all clogged up with with uh, um, muck and kind of partially solidified. Uh, scale, but it was still fairly soft, and that was what was preventing the float from moving up and down. It was just all bound up in there. So 
I took a real small screwdriver. Um, I guess I don't have it uh, in front of me now, but I took a real small screwdriver and very carefully cleaned out in between um, those uh, those those uh, accordion uh, shape uh, baffles. I don't know what to call them, but uh, the thing that comprises the spring. And I was able to uh, you know clean it up pretty nicely so that as you can see it now um, hinges quite easily. Um, and uh, I put it in, in, in a bucket of water and it still floats. So um, I hope I didn't create any leaks in the process. But I was very, very careful and gentle with it as I, as I cleaned it all out. And so now I, I, I'm confident that it's, it's, it's functioning uh, quite nicely. And um, I'm going to be able to put it back together. And as long as the switch is good, I couldn't tell whether the switch is good because I didn't get enough motion on it before. I guess I could test it now with an ohmmeter. To, to see whether when I click this from one position to another, um, whether it actually, you know, opens and closes uh, those contacts there. Um, so maybe I'll do that. Um, but anyway, um, I will put it back together and uh, I'll try to make uh, short clips uh, in the process of, of reassembly um, so everybody gets to see how it goes back together. But one comment I'll make is that... Um, this is the the part that the uh, originally the the the, the blowdown valve was installed where that plug is, and after several years that stopped working. And um, I don't know, 25 or 30 years ago, I went to my plumbing supply house and 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 uh, the uh, very knowledgeable guy that I had actually bought the boiler from said, "Well, take that what was originally the valve, take it out of there." And use the female threads and put a ball valve, ball valve on the bottom of it, which is what I did. And that's been lasting, as I said, probably for the last 30 years. But when I took this off and I cut the heads of the bolts off, um, you know, I, I messed up the, the flange a little bit. But then I needed to get new bolts to put on there. And uh, regular hex head cap screws, let me see if I can grab one. Um, the problem is that, you, you know, if you use those it's not going to leave you much room to put a wrench on it, right? So when I was at my plumbing supply house, um, they offered to sell me one of these, which is just a replacement that I can still put my, uh, my thread my, my uh, nipple and then my ball valve on there. And it comes with, with, you know, regular hex head cap screws. And there's a lot of room to get a wrench on there. So that was, I don't, I don't know what I paid for it, 10 bucks or something like that. That was definitely... Um, worth it. Um, so uh, you know, at the at the supply house, I learned how to clean this thing, and I and I bought that one part. Well, actually, I bought a couple of gaskets um, uh, along with that one part, um, so that I can put everything back together. So I'm going to go away and put together uh, a few components, and I'll be back shortly. So I mentioned that I was going to check the continuity um, to make sure the switch works, and it does. So just with my probes um, on these two terminals I can then operate the switch and you can hear my meter um, but it's closed and it goes open when I throw the switch the other way closed open so good news the switch works one thing to note is that on the switch um, it says top and so obviously you want to have that end up so that when the float goes up it does the right thing and turns the switch on or off. I don't know which way it works, but um, anyway, make sure you install that. The first step in reassembly is to put the float into the body. Um, and here I have the float um, with the gasket in between the flange of the float and the body. And then this bracket here goes on top of that. And you can see the cam for the float is here and I can move, move that back and forth with my finger. So the float is uh, operating freely. Um, snug up the screws. I don't know what torque, but um, my calibrated el elbow told me what torque to use. And um, I did not use a gas gasket cement on there. I don't think it's necessary because there's eight screws that hold that flange in place. I hope I won't put it all together and it leaks, but I think uh, I should be okay without a gasket cement. Okay, so now I have the switch installed. Again, making sure I've got top toward the top. Um, 
not uh, nothing more complicated about it than that. Um, I'll be back in a minute. So here's the uh, surface where the uh, the blowdown valve uh, gets installed. Um, as I said, I'm not using any gasket cement. I don't like to use gasket cement um, unless you have to. Um, in this situation, there's no pressure, and the um, surface, after having uh, carefully cleaned it, is uh, smooth enough that the gasket itself, I believe, will uh, keep it from leaking. So I'll just put it back together like this, along with that new part that I bought. I just realized that I should also mention that the one screw that I had to drill, I was able to get three of these screws out. The one screw I had to drill out, um, my drill bit walked on me. Um, so there's, you know, the, the hole is not complete, but I've still got threads around probably two thirds or three quarters of the hole. So the bolt goes in just fine. Um, and anytime I'm putting together anything like this, I always use uh, anti-seize compound on the, on the bolts when they, before I put them in. Um, anti-seize compound, you know, really helps to get bolts out years later. Um, got a lot of experience using that. What I'm talking about here is, uh, I mean, there's a lot of brands for, of it, but the one I happen to have is a Permatex. But um, anyway, I'll use that when I put the bolts back in. So here it is uh, all reassembled. And by the way, this is the bottom view. Now I'm going to go put it back on the boiler. Okay, so here's the final result. Um... I filled it with water with the uh, thermostat on, calling for heat, and when the water reached just the bottom of the level of the sight glass, um, then the float was starting to come up and uh, closed the circuit, turned on the, um, the uh, gas valve, and boom, flame under the rack. So then I turned, uh, I, I turned off the water and drained out half a gallon and boom turn the flame off again so the switch is back to working and um, now the uh, water is filled to the appropriate height as you can see on the sight glass it's about like two-thirds of the way up uh, the boilers uh, burning away um, so I just want to make the comment that uh, this boiler is about 38 years old or I see 1985 30, uh, 37 years old um, it ran for about 25 years uh, before I had to replace the core. Um, you know, I kept everything else and, and took the covers off and everything else and, and replaced the core. Um, and uh, so it's been about, I guess, 12 years or so that the uh, new core has been in. I'm expecting that to last another 12 years if it lasts as long as the uh, original one. Um, so. Uh, I think that's, from what everybody tells me, that's pretty good life for a, for a boiler. Um, I don't know that uh, for sure, but that's what other people have said that um, do know about these things. Um, what I have used ever since the boiler was new uh, as a treatment is this product uh, right here. Uh, I'm not um, paid to endorse it or anything like that. I'm just telling you this for the, your information. Um, and um, it... Uh, you know what I, I use about three of them a year I put one in at this time of the year uh, probably one in midway through the winter and one um, in the late spring just before I'm ready to turn the boiler off for the season and then it sits over, over the summer uh, with a fresh load of that treatment in there the stuff changes color it turns red when uh, it's consumed so um, it's kind of kind of nice what you see in the sight glass is green. It turns red when it's time to uh, change it out. And what I do for a, a blowdown procedure is once a week, I uh, you know I, I open this valve here, drain water into my bucket here, um, out of the uh, the the um, valve that we just uh, the, the switch that we just uh, rebuilt. Um, I have a pipe here that runs around behind the boiler and it, it, it drains water from the low point at the bottom of the water. I always drain off uh, probably about a half of that can, probably, you know, roughly a quart or so um, until, until it runs clear. Um, and I do the same thing with this valve. I might have to, you know, uh, run it for 30 seconds or so it, it might fill up that bucket. Um, until it, it runs clear. And by clear, I mean the rusty water comes out of it. And then there's one point there where the 
the, the water fill goes into a, a very small, um, I think it's a 3 8 inch uh, uh, street elbow that you can kind of see behind here. And um, what I learned was that that fill valve gets clogged up with um, gunk that's returning um, on the return line, which is that one right there. Um, and uh, so I let a little bit of water run out of that valve, um, every, and I do this every week. I open up each of those three valves and let it run clear once a week. And then, as I said, you know, a couple, three times a year, I put new uh, Surge Master in. And that seems to, it, the boiler works great, uh, no surging, uh, noises of any kind. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, like that, uh, that low water cutoff uh, switch, um, you know, here it is 37 years, it took it before it got to the point where it didn't function. So I think it's a pretty good uh, way to maintain a boiler. I hope all that helps. Uh, take care and uh, happy and good luck with your boilers. Bye.